Welcome everyone and thank you for being here. I'm Dr. Cheryl Willman and I have the privilege to be the director and CEO of the UNM Comprehensive Cancer Center. Fifteen years ago when we started this project, we were determined to assure that all New Mexicans would have access to the world's best cancer care, to the fruits of cancer research, right here in their home state, surrounded by their friends and family who love them. In this video, you're gonna meet a few of the amazing cancer physicians and scientists that we have recruited from all over the United States, from the nation's best medical schools and cancer centers to come and live and work and serve the people of New Mexico. Some of these physicians and scientists, like Dr. Sarah Adams and Dr. Eric Prosnitz, have discovered research in their laboratory that's leading to really important new cancer treatments that are only available and are gonna be tested first here at the UNM Cancer Center in New Mexico. So for many years, we've been studying a protein on a cell that's called G-protein coupled estrogen receptor, or GPER. This receptor, we think, plays an important role in recurrences that occur in women with breast cancer after they've been taking certain drugs like tamoxifen for a number of years. We think that by uh, discovering new compounds that differentially target different types of receptors, we can identify pathways and, and drugs that will result in much less recurrence and, uh, or delay recurrence of breast cancer. So one of the significant advantages of being in an NCI designated comprehensive cancer center is that we have the capability to recruit some of the greatest minds across the country to come build programs with us. Um, we were able to do that with Dr. Sarah Adams, uh, who came to us from Philadelphia. So Sarah, would you like to talk about your trial? Sure, this trial has been very exciting and very important to me. With the support of the Cancer Center and the support of my division and Dr. Muller, we've developed a phase one, two clinical trial based on research from our lab. We developed a combination therapy that showed significant uh, benefit in preclinical models that we've now been able to use to treat patients in our clinic. Early evidence of benefit from this trial was sufficient to generate interest from a national consortium called NRG, which is now going to be running a clinical trial, uh, testing this in a broader cohort of patients across the country. And that's scheduled to open by October of this year. Um, and that'll be led by us here at the University of New Mexico as the principal investigators and the, and the primary center for the clinical trial. It's exceptionally rewarding as a basic scientist to see much of the work that's been going on for almost decades now uh, slowly become available to patients through clinical trials and translational research and provide new cures and approaches for therapy and diagnostics for not only the people of New Mexico, but people across the country. Being able to sit across from a patient on the trial and talk to her about evidence of her treatment response was incredibly moving for me and incredibly grat gratifying, um, and probably the highlight of, of my whole career, truly. The next group you'll hear about is Dr. Reed Selwyn, Dr. Rich Lauer, and Dr. Joanna Fair, who developed a wonderful new program in targeted radioisotopes for cancer treatment. We have our new Theranostics program, which is a new technology that allows for the delivery of radioisotopes intravenously. UNM Cancer Center was the very first cancer center in the state of New Mexico to bring Theranostics uh, to our patients. And the first patients we were treating are patients with neuroendocrine tumors. You might ask, how does that work? How do we treat cancer from inside with molecular targets? Ludothera is one of the newest uh, forms of Theranostic that we have available to us. And the word Theranostic comes from therapy plus diagnostic. And what does that mean? In this case, we have a, an atom that gets attached to a molecule that works its way through the body and targets a particular kind of cancer cell. The gnostic part, the diagnostic part, means that the atom that we put on there is radioactive in a way that we can take pictures of it. So what we can do is use a gallium atom that we can image on a PET scanner, and then we can trade out the gallium for a different kind of radioactive atom 
that can be used to treat the patient. And we know that it will go to the tumor because we already have pictures that show exactly where the agent is going to go. On the original set of images, we can see normal activity in the liver and spleen and kidneys, and we don't see a whole lot else going on. And on the current study, because this agent is so much better and has such better image quality, we can actually see quite a bit of disease present. And the cool thing about this is all we're doing is taking the gallium atom that we use for imaging and swapping it out for the lutetium atom that we can use for treatment. And so this is a patient who looks like he would be a good candidate for that treatment. We could see in the future we'll be identifying more patients who are not responsive to chemotherapy or other therapies who would respond to molecular targets. I also want to introduce Dr. Matt Farrow and Dr. Leslie Andritzos, who have built the state's only fact-accredited bone marrow and stem cell transplant program. This program was absolutely vital because children and adults with leukemia and lymphoma and other cancers and their families had to travel outside of New Mexico for that treatment all these years. Having this accreditation for our auto transplant, having the infrastructure in place, really gives us the, the capability of doing these, these new therapies as well. And so that's something we're very excited about. One of the new therapies that has recently be, become commercially available and is still the subject to, of a lot of intense research is so-called CAR T-cell therapy. That stands for chimeric antigen receptor uh, therapy. But really what it is, it's a Star Wars kind of treatment where we take somebody's lymphocytes, much in the same way that we currently are collecting bone marrow stem cells from the peripheral blood um, on an apheresis machine. But rather than just putting them in storage for later use after a high dose of chemotherapy, instead they go to the laboratory, they get genetically modified to specifically attack the patient's cancer cells. So now we've turned their own immune system into uh, a weapon that can uh, specifically attack the cancer cells and really leave the rest of their, their body alone. We were very excited this year to have Dr. Leslie Andritzos join us. She's a very experienced stem cell transplant physician, both autologous and allogeneic transplant, uh, who came to us from the University of Ohio. Dr. Andritzos brings a new perspective for cell therapy, which is very refreshing and important for our program. She also has very extensive experience in early phase clinical trials, and so she is helping run our clinical trials unit, but also uh, to bring that expertise to the area of cell therapies. In the clinic, I see patients with uh, all types of blood cancers, but my area of research is a very specific type of leukemia called hairy cell leukemia, which is a rare disease. Um, and the reason why this is important is because not very much is known about it. Uh, and even though it's rare, there's a lot of people living with this disease. Uh, and when patients come to me and ask what to expect, a lot of times it's hard to tell them because uh, there are not enough um, databases to really explore some of these questions. And the biggest questions patients ask are, what's gonna happen to me and why did this happen to me? And I think that for this disease, we still don't have the answer to either of those questions. My specific area of research in hairy cell leukemia has been the development of an international patient data registry to help answer some of these questions. Um, and this has required the collaboration uh, of multiple scientists around the world. Um, and we've now brought it to uh, the University of New Mexico. Our center is the only center of excellence uh, in New Mexico and actually in the region. Um, and so we will be the closest uh, center providing expertise in the care of hairy cell leukemia in this part of the Southwest. An amazing neurosurgeon in our midst is Dr. Omar Shohan, who's developed and brought awake brain surgery here to cancer patients in New Mexico. You'll find the video of his presentation quite amazing because it's unimaginable to me that you could be awake during surgical removal of a tumor in your brain. Having a brain tumor uh, is a devastating news to the patient and their families. Um, they are dealing with a new diagnosis of a potentially malignant tumor that may ultimately uh, take their life. An eloquent speech area in one patient may be in one part of the brain. In another patient may be in a different part of the brain. So brain mapping allows us to figure out exactly where those important areas of the brain are. 
My job as a neurosurgeon is to make sure that while I'm removing the tumor, I don't cause them functional deficits. I've had patients who were nuclear physicists, patients uh, who were music teachers or involved in music. Um, I have had patients who were college students and interested in mathematics. So what we do is we tailor our tests that we do during surgery to make sure that that part of their existence, of their personality that is most dear to them, we make extra caution to preserve that. Awake brain surgery allows us two advantages. The first advantage is very obvious, that whenever the neuropsychologist tells me that the patient is getting a little bit weak in their hand or arm or missing a few words, this is my clue to stop operating and go elsewhere in the brain. The other way around is equally important. As long as the patients are performing the tasks that we are asking them to do during surgery, I will keep on going and removing more tumor than I would have otherwise done had the patient not been awake. Now this isn't the end of it though. We have a lot more research to do and a lot more work to do. In the future, technology will be different. The treatment of cancer will be different. People will be living longer. A time will come where molecular medicine would have advanced so much that we probably will not be doing very aggressive surgeries on these patients. There's nowhere else in the state of New Mexico can actually bring together this exclusive team of professionals to actually move this research forward. We're at a really unique point in our history where we will have the capability to provide uh, not just standard of care treatments to patients, but cutting edge treatments that are not available elsewhere in New Mexico and in some cases the surrounding region. I do not believe there's going to be a single cure for cancer. I think cancer is too complicated for that. I like to tell everybody that we started here, we want to end here, and we're somewhere here. We're getting better all the time. In the end, New Mexico patients win in the fight against cancer. I'm Eric Prosnitz. I'm a professor in the Department of Internal Medicine here at the University of New Mexico. I'm also the division chief of molecular medicine and a program leader for cancer therapeutics at the UNM Comprehensive Cancer Center. I'm Carolyn Muller. I'm the chief of gynecologic oncology and the associate director of clinical research at the UNM Comprehensive Cancer Center. I'm Sarah Adams. I'm an associate professor of GYN oncology and I hold the Victor and Ruby Hansen Surface Professorship in Ovarian Cancer Research. My name's Rich Lauer. I'm the deputy CEO and chief medical officer at the UNM Comprehensive Cancer Center. My name is Reed Selwyn. I'm the vice chair of research in the Department of Radiology and I'm the chief of medical physics as well. My name is Joanna Fair. I'm the associate dean of graduate medical education at UNM and I'm also an associate professor of radiology and nuclear medicine. I'm Matthew Farrow. I'm one of the UNM medical oncologists, uh, and I'm also the stem cell transplant program director. I'm Dr. Leslie Andritzos. I am a hematologist, and I specialize in blood and marrow transplantations and treatment of blood cancers. My name is Omar Chauhan. I'm a faculty of neurosurgery um, at University of New Mexico. I also serve as the Director of Neurosurgical Oncology and Epilepsy Surgery. I'm Dr. Cheryl Wilman, and I have the privilege to be the Director and CEO of the UNM Comprehensive Cancer Center. To collaborate with our scientists, the discovery people, and then actually launch the trial, and we see patients, and we see patients respond to these new agents. That is like the holy grail of medicine for us. There's not a better day in this world. Fifteen years ago, when we first began to build the UNM Cancer Center, we promised that we would build a state-of-the-art cancer research and cancer treatment facility for all New Mexicans. I hope through listening to this presentation this evening and having the opportunity to meet our wonderful physicians and scientists, you'll agree we've done just that. Our science is really now bearing fruit, delivering new cancer drugs and treatments. We have innovative programs only at UNM that are providing the very best cancer care throughout our entire state. And we're very honored and privileged to be of service to all of the people of New Mexico. By the way, all that's true. <laughs>